Welcome folks, my name is Sinitar and this is a brief showcase of the most interesting enemy mods for Skyrim. If you are bored from too easy vanilla Skyrim fights, stupid NPCs AI, that's exactly what you need. Combining different mods from this list, you can prepare a setup that fits your own taste. Not simply make game more difficult, but to make enemies really interesting to fight and receive much more rewarding experience. And the first goes the ultimate combat. It drastically improves enemies AI, making combat more aggressive and tactical. All enemies can now dodge your attacks, roll in any direction, mages can switch spells to heal their wounded allies, archers usually stand on the high spots far behind their melee friends, and so on. It adds completely reward poise system, speed bonuses, so both you and enemies deal more damage when moving forward and take less damage when moving backwards. Its unique feature is the custom attack animations for most of the enemies. Continuous attacks, dash attacks, jump attacks, a wide range of rotation attacks and more various attacks in overall. High level wizards can use long chanting spells much more powerful than normal one. It can be a wide range of recovery magic, a penetrating damaging spell or a wide range paralyzed spell. For the player, there is also great and stable locational damage system when firing a bow or crossbow. Locational damage effects are next. Head. Deal additional damage. The amount of additional damage depends on the critical damage and skill of archery. Arms. Reduce accuracy rate of bow, lower physical damage and increase cost of destructive magic. Foot. Decrease attack and movement speed. Mod also tweaks and fixes a lot of annoying vanilla game issues, like significant reduced speed and frequency of NPC's super reaction to long-range attacks, or reducing turning speed and tracking performance of all NPCs. Many huge creatures or bosses like giants, dwarven centurions and dragon priests have their health increased, fitting their size and power. There are also a lot of different features for the player too, and almost all of the mod values can be easily tweaked using MCM menu. Skytest is the most in-depth sustainable wildlife overhaul for Skyrim. It gives new AI to animals and predators. Main focus is to overhaul vanilla Skyrim animals' behavior to act a much more realistic while leaving the original design of the animals and stay absolutely law-friendly. The mod itself does not focus completely on adding more variety to animals, since there are way too many mods for that. But it is also not limited to only altering the AI, making it great all-in-one animal mod. With Skytest, you will see a lot of immersive improvements everywhere. Big creatures like mammoths or saber cats can now knock down you. Animals have increased speed in overall to be more realistic. Most of predators are now afraid of fire. If you use a torch, for example, they will run away in fear, but return when it's gone. In that way, you can avoid too difficult encounters. There are also pack creatures like wolves. They will attack you ferociously while they have enough numbers. But when most of them die, the rest will flee. Animals usually will not fight to the death, trying to run away when heavily wounded. Some of them will give you a roar of warning before the attack, so you can just stop and go another road without fighting. You will also see signs of real wildlife everywhere, dead animals or sometimes even the unlucky predators as a part of a food chain, young animals and cubs, and so on. Now go Skyrim Immersive Creatures. Mod adds dozens if not hundreds of new creatures to enhance your gaming experience. This mod adds brand new law friendly creatures which fit seamlessly into the world of Skyrim, as well as increasing variety of existing creatures, adding diversity and improving gameplay. To be objective, there are also some not law friendly creatures too, but that's not a problem, as they can be disabled in MCM menu. It is a true masterpiece, rich, detailed and almost endless in its own variety. Only here you can see Darzogs, little spiders, huge spiders, different types of wolves, variety of trolls, giant berserkers, slaughtered fish variety, skeleton mages and a lot of other new types of skeletons including even the beast race skeletons, terrific dramans, ancient brigands, new and deadly daedras, peaceful natchez, fire-blowing ash hunters and a lot of new dreamer automatons, as well as dreamer ghosts. You can also meet frost giants and even a recruited giants who fight in a civil war, 
So now, you can see an epic fight of warring factions in different corners of Skyrim. The warring faction system don't end on a civil war. You can even see a war of two goblin tribes. There are a lot of unique features. For example, skeletons can rise up second time after you destroyed them, showing you a reckless look of an undead. In my opinion, immersive creatures is an absolutely must-have enemy mod, especially if its MCM menu is huge, and there you can tweak literally absolutely each aspect of the mod. The next two mods are both unique and absolutely great, but you need to choose only one of them to use, as they both cover the same game content. First goes the revenge of the enemies. It is my personal favorite, I am playing with more than a year and maybe my favorite enemy mod at all. It covers huge amount of enemies, actually almost all of them, just not touching the animals, giving each of them better AI and diverse fighting style. But the most awesome feature is that now almost each enemy type has its own unique skills based on its nature. Dreamer automatons can fire a massive barrages of fire like catapults and have other special attacks. Farmers can go invisible straight in the middle of a battle, backstabbing you from behind. Vampires summon gargoyles and use much bigger amount of spells. They can even turn into a swarm of bats, avoiding your damage or teleporting closer to you to attack. All bosses were made much more powerful and deadly. Dragon priests, named war bosses like Red Eagle or Karstag, each of them now will give you an actual feeling you are fighting the boss but not just a regular enemy with higher HP. This mod is making game harder, but it is greatly balanced and don't make any of enemies unkillable. Just sometimes, especially in boss fights of course, you will need to think about the tactics. While previous mod is focusing on diversity and unique skills, the next one is all about realistic creature resistances. Vanilla Skyrim almost did not have logical resistances at all, so you could hit Fire Atronach with fire and Ghost with a sword, not with advanced adversary encounters. For example, Ghosts are now almost immune to all non-silver or dated weapon, making them hard encounter for unprepared warrior. In this video, I am level 35 and that Ghosts are only level 5. Technically, I should just one-shot them with my bare hands, but not now. Skeletons now have very high arrow resistance, what is pretty logical by the way. So even if you have maxed archery skills and high tier bow, you will be not able to kill skeleton from one or two shots like any other monster. Dreamer Centurions are now almost resistant to lighting damage, so it is not the best way to fight them. You can still try to kill them with fire with decent success, but that's also not the best way. But if you will try a cold spells, you will see their HP bar disappearing very fast. While the main mod idea is pretty simple, but it is realized very logically and carefully, and that's making your gameplay much more interesting, forcing you to think about how it would be better to kill the next enemy. Because if you will be not very well prepared, fight can end badly for you. Organized Bandits in Skyrim is a mod dedicated especially to the most common enemy type in the game, Bandits. In Vanilla game, there were only a few types of them. Their fighting style was similar and their AI was poor as hell. Mod adds 57 Bandit types, grouped in different gangs depending on the region, character level and your game progress and overall. That means about 2500 new bandits in total, I'm not joking, as well as 300 new ranks and titles, all with different faces, so that you might never see the same person twice. Each of big gang has its own unique shield with custom emblems. There are also more than 200 named bandits, half bosses, with the unique bound rings. Have you ever seen an assassin bandit ambushing you from behind because you haven't even noticed him as he was invisible? Or maybe plague bandits spitting poison and diseases on you? Do you remember how guards always whined about lack of good bandit raids? Well, their wishes became true. Bandits now can raid towns and cities, sometimes in very great numbers, so that will be a challenging fight. Wow, I have almost forgot about the biggest flying problems of Skyrim, the dragons. 
They had not so good AI and it was pretty easy to kill them even at low level. I'm not even talking about level 80 Dragonborn in full Daedric gears. Their variety was also pretty poor. There are a lot of great dragon mods. By the way, if you need more information about dragon mods exactly, check out my best dragon mods video. First one, adding 14 new dragon types to increase variety. Second one, adding unique skills as well as base physics to dragons to make dragon combat more interesting and challenging. Third one, give an option to change their attributes to your taste. Do you want dragons to be just slightly more beefy? No problems. You can want to turn dragons into killing machines with tons of health and 90% all resistances because your character is already overpowered and need new challenges? No problem. Two clicks in MCM menu and you have finished. Add to these custom skills and even a weather effects when fighting the dragons and you will receive best dragon mod ever created. Moonlight Tales Werewolf and Werebeer Overhaul. That's an amazing mod to improve Werebeer's part of the game, both you and your Werebeer's enemies. First main feature is a wide list of possible textures of how Werewolves and Werebeers should look in the game. Complexion, skin and fur color, eyes color and teeth look. You can choose that in MCM menu and instantly apply. Second big part of this overhaul is an overall improvement of Werewolf presence. There are now more random werewolves and werebeer encounters, and if you share their blood, they will be not aggressive to you. Werebeasts are now able to truly spread their lycanthropic gift by attacking the NPCs. There is a small chance of infecting them with werewolf virus or werebeer virus. But if you are werewolf, you should be also well prepared, as it is possible for the werebeast player to be tracked by experienced armed hunters of various skills and races usually from Silverhand or Vigilant of Standard Factions. Immersive Patrols functionality is easily described by its name. Mod adds fully functional, scheduled patrols of almost every major faction across all the DLCs, including Stormcloaks, Talmor, Imperials, Dungard, Travelers, Merchants, Bandits, Skull, Redoran, Rivers, Ricklins and some more. Now, it also includes War Zones-like battles with fort capture behavior. It always was strange that there is a civil war going on, but you never see the conflicting sides besides the questline. Now there are several large squads of soldiers patrolling all the regions. When two of these foreign faction squads meet, an epic battle begins. Adding a live civil war conflicts, fort captures and dozens of new, law-friendly and logically located faction patrols, this little but amazing mod is very advised to be in your lord order. The last, but not the less important mod is named Aziz. It is shortening from automatic spells increase pounds. But I strongly advise you to use only strict amount of its features that I will show a bit later. So, you have your perfect mod setup. You have some amazing spell mods as well as maybe some perk overhaul mod. The most common issue with that is by default NPCs do not have access to spells and perks from the mods that's making you most likely absolutely overpowered, especially on high levels, and the game is starting to be more and more boring. Also, haven't you noticed that your character is only who can drink potions? Not fair at all. With the help of Asis, you can distribute spells and perks added from the mods to NPCs, as well as allowing them to use potions. Also, be sure to install Asis improved indie files. It makes that distribution perfect, giving NPCs only some of spells and perks and not giving them overpowered talents. While such things as perks and potions usage can sound insignificant, but actually you will see a great difference in battles that now will be much more fun. Also, as I have told before, be sure to use as a patcher exactly with options marked on this screenshot for the best results. Don't use additional spawns option as it's not very stable and don't use improved AI option as most of current combat mods do this better. That's all for now folks, I hope you enjoyed. Support the channel by your subscribe if you like the video and be sure to enable channel notifications to not miss more Elder Scrolls content and stay tuned. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Scimitar Gaming here, signing out.